How many fathers in the audience? All right. How many people who have either heard of a father or know of a father? All right, I'm in the right place. When I tell people I work with fathers, I often get an interesting reaction. But as a father of three, and someone who now works with fathers throughout the world, fatherhood means so much to me. So everybody who raised their hand, I want you to think to yourself, what does fatherhood mean to you? Well, with my work with fathers, fatherhood means so much to me. It means love. It means commitment. It means connection. It means responsibility. It means vulnerability. But most of all, fatherhood is leadership. And I came across this relationship between fatherhood and leadership through my experiences developing programs and also through my trials as a modern day dad. One of those experiences was my first job out of college. My position was a crisis worker for children in need and a mentor for young people who often had emotional, behavioral, and oftentimes mental health issues. My first job coincided with a month earlier, our daughter being born. So I was a first time father and new to the field. And I was excited to try to change the world. And one of my first young men to work with was a young man named Sean. Sean had been hospitalized over the last year seven times for emotional and behavioral issues. He had jumped from foster care home to foster care home and was being reunited with his mother but didn't have a father figure in his life. And I remember approaching Sean's doorstep and I became very overwhelmed. I became overwhelmed because I felt ill-prepared for this great responsibility. I didn't think that my skill set, I didn't think I had enough to help change this person's life. And I remember feeling almost the exact same way a month prior when my daughter was born. Although I was an excited first-time father, I didn't think I had the skill set. I didn't think I had what it takes. I didn't think I was ready for this great responsibility. So I began to work with Sean over a course of three to four months. And we began to talk and communicate and engage. And eventually I posed the question to him, what vision do you have for your life? What are your goals, your dreams, your aspirations? And Sean looked at me with a little bit of bewilderment and told me, Mr. B, nobody's ever asked me that. He went on to say that he wanted to go to college, get his master's degree, and have a career in music. And as I continued to work with Sean, he started to do well in school. He was communicating with his mother. And I was able to link him to a friend of mine who ran a music program in New York City. I told Sean, his, my only expectation for you is to show up. If you don't feel comfortable in participating, I just want you to show up. And not only did he show up, but he did well in the program. And eventually, our time had passed, and my work was done with Sean. He had done well in school, he was communicating with his mother, and he was doing well in this music program. About five years later, I'm walking downtown Brooklyn, New York, and I hear somebody in the distance yelling my name. It was Sean. Mr. B, Mr. B. And I went and saw Sean, and he was doing well. He was 19 at the time. I asked him, how you doing? And we had some time to sit and talk about his progress. Sean told me that he just completed his first year of college, still had the goal to graduate with a master's degree, and had just signed as a producer in one of the record labels. I had goosebumps. My heart opened up. I was overjoyed on seeing the success of this young man. And I looked at him, I said, Sean, you know, you had a pretty tough start to your life. What was the turning point? And he looked at me and he said, Mr. B, when you came to my, my house, it was the first time somebody gave me hope when I felt hopeless. He said, when you came to my house, you gave me a voice when I felt I had no voice. He said, when you came to my house, Mr. B, you gave me choices when I thought there were no choices. 
And as I left the conversation, I began to reflect on my work with Sean, and now being a father of a five-year-old and someone who's developing fatherhood programs. And I asked myself, what did I really give to this young man? And it came down to leadership. Leadership not in regards to my title, position, or authority, but leadership is about influence, about how one life can influence another. And with my work with fathers, I often tell them, fatherhood, like leadership, is about influence. It's about how your actions, and you're an example, can influence your children's life, your children's children's life, and children around you. And we worked through, I looked at this work I did with Sean, and I draw upon it now, because I've been lucky over the last few years to now work with fathers all throughout the globe, different socioeconomic backgrounds, and I realized the similarities, whether it was the first time father in the South Bronx, or the C-suite executive in Chicago, to the entrepreneur in London, or the stay-at-home dad in San Francisco, all came with the same three basic concerns, and the research supported it. The first concern was performance. These fathers were worried how would they step up to the plate and be good fathers. Their second concern was mortality. For the first time, these fathers were coming to me and saying, Devin, I'm worried about the legacy I want to leave and create for my children. And thirdly was security. Fathers were worried about not only how they could support their children emotionally, but financially as well. And I found the answer in leadership development. And we worked on developing skills, leadership skills, that translate into being a good father and vice versa. Things like creating a vision or strategic planning, communication, authenticity, honesty, mobilizing, towards a valued goal. But most of all, doing the work on yourself so you could show up as the best version of yourself in all the relationships in your life. Fatherhood is leadership, and leadership is influence. And we talk about not worrying about buying the big present, but instead having a big presence. Colin Powell once said, that great leaders are often great simplifiers who can cut through argument, debate, and doubt to give solutions everyone can understand. And I charge that great fathers are also great simplifiers who can cut through argument, debate, and doubt to provide solutions everyone can understand. Fatherhood is leadership. Leadership is influence. And the most important question a father can ask himself is what kind of leader are you going to be? Thank you.